Okay, welcome back to Uncle Todd's Video Drum Lessons. This is number five. Today we're going to be talking about reading music. If you already know how to read music, stop watching. Go do something else. Uh, if you don't and you're not interested, watch anyway. Um, it can be very valuable. It can help you learn a lot of things. You can get books. You can get transcripts out of magazines, all kind of things, if you just can read a little bit. And reading drum music is not hard. It's not as hard as reading other types of music. There's just less information to be conveyed. Okay, so, start with the time signature. Typically, you're going to see 4-4, four, four. you might see 6-8, you might see a bunch of other things, 5-4, but typically, most of the time, especially with these lessons, you're going to see things in 4-4. Four, four. What does 4-4 what four, four mean? 4-4 four, four means there are four beats in the measure, and the four on the bottom can be thought of as one-fourth, it means a one quarter. A quarter note is what gets one beat. So there's going to be four quarter notes in a measure in 4-4 four, four time. Okay, so a whole note, all four beats on one note. So one, two, three, four. Half note, two beats per note. One, two, three, four. Quarter notes. One, two, three, four. This little symbol right here is an accent. So on the third, on the second one, you'd go one, two, three, four. All right, and eighth notes have one bar, and uh, if they're written singly, they'll they'll look like this. But when they're written together, usually there's just a horizontal bar tying them together. So here we have one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, um, sixteenth notes, two bars across the top. Um, same thing written singly. You often have a. Um, two flags hanging off the note right there. So in this case, we count this one E and a, uh, two E and a. Uh, very easy to say fast. So one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So that's what we have here. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. One measure of 16th notes. Um, they look back, dotted half notes are an easy way to write beat of three. A dot just means you're gonna add half of the preceding note. So one, two, three. So a dotted quarter note is, you guessed it, it's a quarter note and an eighth note. Okay? A dotted eighth note is the same as an eighth note and one sixteenth note. And, uh, these little hat guys are, we're going to do rests now. Um, you're gonna have to, don't waste any brain cells remembering which one's a half and which one's a whole. This one's a whole, this one's a half, but you'll tell by context. Um, quarter note rest, eighth note rest. So whole note rest, half note rest, quarter note rest. Eighth note rest, can you guess what a sixteenth note rest looks like? Sure you can. It's got two little flags, something like that. Alright, some other symbols. There's another time signature, 6-8. A lot of times in drum music you're going to see this. It's a horizontal bar with a number above it. Number could be anything. Um, just means how many measures you're going to wait. <laughs> you're going to rest for that many measures. Um, sometimes right at the top of the music you're going to see this. You're going to, that's how I draw quarter notes because they're easier, but you're usually going to see them as little round guys. Quarter note equals 120. It's just giving you the tempo, so you know what to set your metronome to. This little guy is not a division symbol. This is a repeat. And, okay, a couple other things you're going to see are triplets marked in, so three notes per beat, so triplet, 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 um, and then six tuplets. Sometimes I'll, I'll try and remember to play those next time we're on the drums, but basically a doubled up triplet, twice as fast. Uh, see a lot of this in marching band music. Um, and then 30 second notes, usually played as rolls, usually you're double stroking 30 second notes, not always, but a lot of times you are when you see a, something notated in a 30 second note, it means do a little roll there. Okay, one other thing you might see in music, and that is volume markings. Um, if you see this, piano, pianiss, pian, pian, pianissimo, if you see pianissimo, you see three P's, go home, if you're on a kit, eh, no way, this means play so quietly nobody can hear you means go take a pee break, go play with your weed, go do something. Uh, if you see this, <laughs> get those big heavy uh, two S's out. Triple forte, FFF. So anyway, you'll see, uh, I think, what, meso forte, medium loud. Anyway, you don't have to worry about it. You don't see it too much in drum music. And Usually when you're looking at a piece of music, there's a key. So either the beginning of a book you might have or at the beginning of the article, and the key's going to tell you what, how they've used the staff to indicate what drums to play. So the drums aren't, uh, don't use the notes, you don't have to remember FACE and every good boy deserves favor and all that stuff. And typically it'll be somewhere around this pattern, it's very consistent. Um, it tends to have been standardized. Down here is your bass drum, 
if you see an X marked down here, um, X's are usually used for cymbals and hi-hats, uh, so that's going to mean your hi-hat with your foot. And your snare drum's up here, it's got parentheses around it, some, some writers use that to indicate a ghost note, you're going to hit it real lightly. Um, and obviously if you hit real hard, you've, you've got accents. Um, and then your toms, depending if the, if the, the music even has toms in it, are usually going to be explained how they want them and how many toms. Sometimes there's only a mounted tom and a floor tom, so there's only two of them usually pretty far apart. Um, usually in the spaces rather than on the lines. Um, but if you've got more, they'll use more of the lines up. And then usually written up very high are your cymbal or your hi-hat patterns. And if you see a, an, um, a hi-hat with an O above it, that usually means they want you to hit that open. And if it's got this little tie going to the next note or however far it goes, they want you to let it ring until then and they want you to close it with your foot wherever that note comes in the measure or on the beat. And that's, that's one way of looking at a, a typical key. There's a couple ways of notating drums, and uh, we're going to look at a couple beats using each method. Okay, so now we're going to look at a typical drum beat, and we're going to look at the same beat written two different ways. Um, sort of the key I showed you a little earlier, here's our hi-hat playing straight eighth notes, here's our bass drum, here's our snare drum. So this is just going to be one and two and three and four and one. And my heart here, let's see, you can play and repeat. So we're just going to repeat that. That's one way. Now, when I'm showing video lessons, I'm trying to do subtitling and have limitations of the computer and the subtitling. <clears throat> I will often just show it without the staff. I'll often leave the hand off, and I'll just show you the bass drum and the snare drum with the snare drum line above the bass drum. So same beat. Here and here, still one and two and three and four and one. And I usually tend to show you the second measure as well because I want to show the relationship going from four to one a lot of times. So if I can, I'll put those, put in some starting bars. Okay, here's a second way to notate drum music, and that is to just kind of put everything on its separate line. I actually prefer this; it takes up more space. Um, but I've seen some Modern Drummer magazine articles that do this, and I've seen some books that do this, and I find it very easy to read. They just label what each line is, your cymbal, your hi-hat with your hand, snare drum, bass drum, hi-hat with your foot. And um, and you can, another thing we should mention is here is the broad, the heavy line, the thin line, the two dots means you're going to repeat everything written on the page till the next one over here, until you see the next heavy, thin line, heavy line, two dots, and the two dots sort of everything pointing towards each other. So in this case, we're, we're showing the bass drum and the snare drum, and we're kind of tying them together to give you a sense of the rhythmic feel that's going to go on between the two of them. So you're going to hit one and two dot and three and four and. So you can just kind of see or just even play the whole rhythm on your snare drum to begin with. Bum, 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 bum. And then you know what it's going to sound like between your various limbs. And that can be very helpful. And then the other thing is you could rewrite some of this yourself since the, the hands are only on two and four, you could take those out and look at the relationship of the bass drum notes to your ride cymbal. So the sixteenth notes right in there, right in between those two eighth notes. Um, and then down here on your, your foot, just playing on two and four with your left foot as well. But this, this sort of notation um, is nice and clean, and if you like it and you've got music that you're having trouble with, you might want to try rewriting it in this format. If you don't like time, seeing the rhythms between the bass drum and the snare drum, take it apart, write it your own way. But this is just something you should be familiar with in case you see this. Okay, thanks for watching. I promise next time when I won't be doing any of this professorial stuff. We'll be back on the drums, we'll be playing some more beats, we're beginning getting into probably out of the beginner stage. I don't really know what makes a beginner or an intermediate, but we're going to move into some 16th note stuff on the bass drum and some, some really fun rocking beats. So, stay tuned.